morning. I'm Richard Miller. You've reached Never Not Here, and please feel welcome to be here and uh, come often. And uh, so many times when we look at the world, when we look at ourselves, we, we have a tendency to want to divide things up. And uh, the easiest is to say the body, the mind, the spirit. And then we wonder, are these separate things, or can you really uh, look at them separately, and do they act independently or separately, or are they all really the, one, the same thing, but somehow, you know, we really don't know. Uh, we make up these distinctions, and, uh, and we're hoping that it's helpful uh, as a way to speak. And, uh, and that's been well spoken about. Uh, lots of people talk about it from the divided point of view and from the unified point of view. <clears throat> or they say that, uh, you know, somehow it helps to uh, take it apart and look at it. And, and from that you can see that it's one thing. And uh, I want to propose that also, you know, so many things we look at because we look at the community influences, the world influences, and our individual life. And maybe they're all one thing, too. In other words, who we are inside is what we receive from the outside. Or, you know, our consciousness and concepts come back at us. You know, that's saying they're separate, right? And, uh, and somehow there's an attractive power or something like that. But maybe it's just a conceptual power. And uh, some communities maybe are more growth-oriented communities that they just... Uh, are more open and more more free and some communities maybe are uh, more entrenched and more invested in uh, in so many facets of the community and the power structure that seems to be uh, uh, you know it, it, there's a preference for how it used to be in uh, older concepts and older principles let's say and uh, so then we're always talking about renewal and, uh, but we might be sitting in a community or in the soup, you know, like our own consciousness soup, that is preferring uh, uh, older structures and honoring uh, the traditions. And uh, so uh, this is a subject I'm going to bring up today, and maybe uh, Andreas doesn't know about it, but uh, we're in Berlin today, and uh, so please help me welcome Andreas Muller. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Richard. Hi. Thanks for having this idea of coming on because, uh, I don't know, Berlin has always been very attractive to me. And, uh, uh, and now I get to speak with you who are living there. Although you, you were born in Stuttgart, you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a small town near Stuttgart, but very close. Yeah. So how long it's have you been in Berlin? It's uh, almost two years now. Yeah. I, you know, the, I just got this idea that to, to start like this, that uh, I used to live in Europe, actually. I lived in Italy for about 10, 10 12 years. And, uh, yeah, I was coming and going, so then I, it's not a precise cutoff date because some, some years I was most of the time here and, and just a little bit there. And I still had a house there even. And mm -hmm. uh, so I knew a lot of people that uh, moved around Europe. Not a lot, you know, but I knew some. And I knew some people that were from the universities and all, and and uh, learning new principles and renewing, you know, renewing civilization in a way from as best that a university can do. A lot of times that uh, that kind of thought is is tied to the past also. And they were saying that there's no jobs, you know, like for instance, this one guy uh, was an architect and designed city spaces and so on. And he was saying, nobody's doing any of these projects, you know, they're all fine theories, but, you know, where can you go to get them done? And it kind of came up that <clears throat> Berlin was a place that was uh, actually open to trying out new ideas, number one, and I think Spain, number two. And I just kind of got this idea that Berlin it used to be a divided city, and then they used to have an old infrastructure, and that infrastructure somehow got renewed because, like, uh, the old regime was gone, and so then it was rebuilt. Whereas in most countries, our own country, uh, uh, the bureaucracy uh, said in a nice way, the, you know, those people that uh, run everything, 
they're not changed with the with the politics. Uh, mm. uh, everything is the same. I, uh, even in Italy, where the corruptions were, they were always there. They never could root them out with any new politics. It would only make it worse, maybe. And uh, so then. Spain with Franco also was renewed, but some lots of years ago. But still, I mean, to break that thing that actually that tail, that tail of structure that really goes until people die, you know, it goes uh, 50, 60, 70 years. And uh, to break that even 20 years ago is kind of like a renewal. And here we're talking about consciousness. We're talking about breaking a tail, you know, the, our, the tail of our concepts. And or some breaking out of them, even if we don't want to be vicious about it and break them with a hatchet or something like that. We just want to break out of them and somehow be able to come in, go, come and go. We just want to find the open door policy so we can uh, move around in consciousness. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I just want to take some of your reflections about Berlin and uh, and, uh, and and not dividing, not dividing. Uh, who we are, from where we are, from who we live with, you know, maybe it's all one, because we say that a mm. lot. Mm. Well, I don't want to say much about Berlin or what what is the truth or my truth about Berlin, but I can say something, there is a flavor like, and a lot of people say this, and I don't know where it especially comes from, but there's a flavor of freedom in this town. So what you just said that a lot of people go there and try new things. This is something I would say is true. Yeah, because compared to all the other cities in Germany, yeah, it's it's free. There's a sense of freedom in the air. Yeah. And a lot of different people living together not and not in a negative way not caring too much about each other so the punks go together with um, people who are nicely dressed and they don't they live peacefully besides that's what I mean with a sense of freedom that's what what I would say about Berlin so then uh, people aren't re reacting, right? I mean, uh, you don't react. Because um, usually we react to another person, like, oh, my gosh, this guy's crazy. Or, you know, these guys are ruining the country. Or look at these guys. They're just uh, <laughs> messing up everything, you know. They just hang around here. Why don't they go to work? And Or, you know, we, uh, we are always reacting to someone else. And so then people, they're not really managing the reactions there. The, the reactions just don't come up. Maybe. I don't know about that, but that's what, what I notice. That's what's noticeable. Hmm. Probably the reaction just just doesn't come up. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. You know, because I like living in a big city myself, uh, because uh, especially a cosmopolitan city, Chicago is pretty cosmopolitan means people come from all over the world and these are, are it's like a mini reflection of the world uh, we have a mini world here <laughs> and uh, it sounds like Berlin is the same yeah maybe it's also a world with uh, let's say youth power under 30 or you know under 40 probably have a, a, a lot of important positions in uh, and uh, their outlook is like, uh, let's make this place work. Well, there are a lot of young people in Berlin. That's true. It's it's a little bit of in city for mostly for students or for people between twenty and forty. I think they they come a lot here. Yeah. And of course, you can feel feel this. In the city, yeah. It's funny to what I can tell a story about it. Two weeks ago, there were elections in Berlin, and they elected a party. It's called the Pirate Party. It, <laughs> yeah, and they got uh, eight or nine percent, and they were elected into the into the parliament from Berlin. It's a local parliament, but. Uh, the first time in Germany and th those are young people 
and they stand for transparency. They are actually formed as an internet party and they want to protect the civil rights. But um, one could say they, um, they came out of the blue and all of a sudden got 9%. And beside the traditional parties, now the pirate party is in the parliament. And it's great. It's crazy somehow for Germany, but it's great. It's funny. You know, we talked a little bit. Of, you know, that's perfect lesson. I mean, that, uh, I think the United States, I'm going to tell everybody about the pirate party and see if we can get on their website. <laughs> <laughs> because now we have the Occupy mm, uh, demonstrations in 80 cities. You know, uh, that people are trying to figure it out. Uh, Occupy means, uh, they started out saying Occupy Wall Street. And it's saying like, uh, the way I see it is like, uh, they're saying uh, our institutions are in a way not working for what we are wanting them to do. And our financial system is not working for what we're wanting that to do. And so then, can't you know, that must mean that the theory is flawed. And uh, so then transparency would be something huge that they would want to say that is missing. <laughs> you know, that's one part of it. <laughs> and, uh, and also to, uh, you know, it's kind of like a takeoff on uh, the Tahir Square in Egypt, you know, that uh, with everything is arranged on Facebook, <laughs> you know. And so then the whole idea, you said an Internet party. And, uh, well, sorry. Well, their idea is really to... Um... Well, if the politicians they talk together and then they present what they uh, they present the solution, but they think that also when they are talking, this should be seen that um, that the people can see how they came to the solution, that all the process of of the discussion must be transparent. Oh, that's beautiful. So they're doing webcasting, I bet you. Yeah. Yes, they immediately started to uh, to send or to show their first meeting after the election to other people when they were um, talking about who gets which job to do in the in the government and so. And it was very funny because they were all not, there were no uh, no pros, no no professionals. So there were. Well, some young guys sitting together and talking about how to govern now, somehow like this. Some that's kind of set up. No, it's exactly the same thing is happening in uh, in all these cities. I I started going on to these uh, Occupy Wall Street. Uh, well, Occupy Wall Street is is uh, is New York. Occupy Chicago. Occupy Shy org. Occupy San Francisco. Occupy L A. And I start posting on them, too, and they're all in the very, you know, like, you know, there's eight posts, there's 40 posts, there's, you know, they're just talking about demands. It's really in, in, the, in the birth. They're birthing uh, what are they up to, you know, and I think it would be really cool for everybody to go on these websites and post and try to, uh, you know, uh, put out some, some intelligent ideas. But I think, you know, the whole thing is a beautiful movement. And it could be, anyhow. I hope it is a beautiful movement. But, you know, that's what most people are doing is standing back to see, well, what's going to happen because everybody knows that things aren't working around here. You know, it's not... Uh, but we want to... You know, in a way, we want to do the same thing because we're doing an Internet party, too, but we're doing it a consciousness party, right? Or a t <laughs> and I don't know. It's not kind of getting catching hold. It's quite as good as those uh, other guys, those pirates. <laughs> we're not going to get 9%. <laughs> Who knows? We could keep trying, though. We keep trying, yeah. So uh, what is it like when you're speaking with people? I mean, we're saying that they're open to do new things. Are they open to, to, to carry new thoughts? <clears throat> well, to, to most people, it's very confronting. It's a very, what is presented here is a very radical message. So... But yes, of course, there is an openness to this. If people come, there is an openness 
to this. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Is it is it that radical, or is it just the way we presented it so radical? In other words, like uh, maybe the message is just totally simple, but we say it in a way like, "Oh my God, there's nothing here, nobody here, uh, nothing to do." Yeah. Like all this kind of thing, saying, "Well, come on, what are you talking about? We're out there being pirates and transparent, and we're trying to, and we're yeah. not professionals, and we're figuring out how to govern." Mm. You know, we're doing yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, of course, it's. Actually, it's very um, simple and natural and not even something so natural that it's not even something to talk about, actually. But um, for this, I call it an energy. For, for this, which feels separate from the whole, for this, it's very radical. Almost actually too radical. It can't deal with it at all. So, yeah. If I say it's radical, it's actually from the viewpoint of this uh, apparent, apparently separate thing. You know, but I'm not so sure that, uh, you know, that that's the way, you know, to say, to present it, those that are separate from the whole. Because uh, if you start talking about the whole, the whole is what we discover. And that's like the end point where we should, it's not, I don't think it's where we should start. We should end there, you know, and we should start oh, okay. by just uh, loosening up, uh, you know, just like it's happening in Berlin, you know, loosening up our, our preconceptions of other people and, uh, and uh, loosening up our conceptions of, of situations. And then, uh, then they start to kind of like, you know, that the boundaries start to get real foggy, right? <laughs> Isn't that kind of like a... Uh, discovery method? A discovery method? Well, instead of saying something, let's just uh, uh, work around it and all of a sudden it becomes a, it pops out, you know, like, oh, wow, look, we're discovering together that uh, there, there's not a lot, a lot of boundaries between races, for instance. Mm, we used to think yeah. that races were different species in a way, you know, like our ancestors did, and enough to keep slavery going and so, and so on and so on. So then those boundaries uh, have melted, right? Without anybody saying oneness. Yeah, it just seems to happen. Yeah, that's that's what apparently happens. Yeah, yeah. But I think it happens for, actually for no reason. That's just what seems to happen these days. But without any... Yeah, in other words, nothing you're doing makes it happen, right? It just is happening uh, more and more, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think this happens without any reason or just the, the direction where this might lead to is already, is already a thought or an assumption where, uh, where no one knows where it leads to or if it leads to to something. Mm. But yeah, the breaking down of borders and um, hierarchy and things like that seem to seem to happen these days, yeah. You yeah. Now here's one for you, because like uh, if I got you right, you were saying like uh, where it leads to, in other words, the whole cause and effect and the chain and chain of events and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, which is kind of, you know, it's got to be a, a, a series of events in your mind because it's, uh, you know. Anyhow, you're saying, well, if that, that's just a thought. In a way, you're saying, well, that's not, you know, what's really happening is just, it's just happening. And uh, all those, you know, any kind of ascribed cause. But, you know, another thing is, is like, if you find yourself in a different place or a different mm, mental state or a different, uh, openness or a different peacefulness, I think you'll realize that you had a dream of that or a thought of that before. There was a seed of a thought about it, even if it wasn't on the top front burner and uh, wasn't necessarily a goal. But I've, uh, I've often seen, found myself in a new place that seemed like, whoa, this just came out of the blue. And then I realized I, I probably did dream that, you know. 
And then I started thinking how dangerous dreams are, like, uh, you know, because uh, <laughs> they come true so quick. <laughs> Don't wish for the wrong things. Oh, yeah. Right on. <laughs> so anyhow, you know, like just saying, it's just a thought. Something's missing there, you know, because I know that my life changes so much. And uh, mm. it's just not, you know, I, you know. If you say it's just a thought, so there's really no doing and there's no way to, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, they're out on Wall Street there. It doesn't have anything to do with somebody wanting to go out on Wall Street. Sure it does. It has to do with a lot of people that know that there's a huge injustice and it's been going on for ages and it, and it never seems to, you know, the way they compute it, it never seems to be uh, heal, self-healing. And then it's kind of like fed up with that or like, uh, oh, my God, they're sick with it. Or there's a there's a there's a huge angst about it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But um, I thought um, this what you described is um, what at least apparently happens with a thought of the I thought was we all think where it might lead to. We all have, or not we all, but most people already have this better world in their heads while they see this happening. But I have no idea where this leads to. It um, doesn't necessarily have to lead to something. To something. That's what I was um, referring to as a thought or only an assumption that this apparent happening now leads to something to to a, to a special state in the future in a supposed future anyway but <clears throat> i don't know couldn't we say that everybody on the planet every last person enlightened not enlightened uh, totally cre uh, cretins everybody's got a picture in their head of a better world and uh, yeah, somehow every last one and they say well it could happen it couldn't happen or you know it's just gonna and you know it'll whatever happens happens by itself no matter what they say that they're, they're holding that picture and that picture is actually kind of like a, a framework for what can build you know what you know how what the what is going to arise you know by itself mm. yeah so to yeah. speak but it's already planted it's already planted as a seed as an image in every last person's brain not brain, but, you know, just in their consciousness. Mm. And then we deny that and say, well, it's, you know, it has no activity. It has, it's, just a, it's just a thought, you know, so what? <laughs> but really, something's missing there, you know, because, and a lot of people, uh, okay, here's another one. I want to kind of change gears a little bit, you know, and see if you recognize this or see what you think about it. But uh, what, I'll, I'll just ask you a simple question then. What's a belief? Is there such a thing as a belief or what is a belief? <clears throat> well, a, a belief is um, something which um, I would say apparently happens. And it could either happen to um, it could either happen to someone with who experiences himself or herself as someone separate, or it just happens for i would say no one so belief is just a belief something which which yeah apparently happens so yeah. it really doesn't apparently happen but it's already happened it's happening right because there's beliefs i mean uh beliefs are just kind of like uh kind of an acknowledgement or somehow a uh, belief uh this is how the world works or this is what uh, this is the ambient that i live in or this is the the medium that uh that humanity and this is the planet earth or something like that and then and then uh the different belief structures are different qualities uh, uh of uh this planet earth at this moment mm. and they're all happening now it's a soup that we live in right now it's not gonna happen well it could change you know but i mean slowly slowly <laughs> that's the thing you know <laughs> And you could say it arises too, but you know, it's arising with the effect. You know, everything is arising together. All the causes and the effects arise together, right? Because you say they seem to be there. Yeah, yeah, but 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 that's the whole thing. <clears throat> it seems to be there. Well, <clears throat> 
Well, I'm talking a lot about um, apparent, well, actually, I'm not so much, um, well, I couldn't really say this too, but I'm not so much concerned about what is happening on the world, because, um, <clears throat> oh, no, I forgot what the question was, because I would, I'm talking a lot in terms of apparent apparent separation or an energy which feels separate from the whole. And I would say that this this energy it's that what calls itself me mostly. Um this lives in a in an artificial reality somehow. And in this reality there are cause and effects. There is the world, um, something real, which is made out of different objects. Yeah. And for, for this individual, this cause and effect thing, for example, seems to be very real. Actually, it's the only reality it can live in. It lives in time, it lives in cause and effect, and it lives in a world which is real which is only real. And for this individual, all this, what is going on, all this processes, if the process of even a personal process or the process of the country or the process of what's going on in the world seems to be very real and important. Yeah. And as something which is happening in reality. What did you call it? You call it the artificial reality, I think, right? Or you, they, they seem to live in this artificial uh, conceptual world. Or, uh, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, one could, one could actually say that already experiencing oneself as something separate is an artificial reality. All right. No. So then I just want to say, like, uh, everyone's doing that, right? Everyone lives in that world, right? You know, you can see it from... Uh, from a unity or, or, you know, you could say, well, it must be the whole uh, reason to say it's artificial is because you can, you see the big picture, let's say, uh, you see, uh, like, well, I don't want to start saying form and formless and all that stuff, but let's say, let's just say you see, uh, you have a real good feeling for just the, the, the vibrancy of life that is everywhere present. And, uh, so then, uh, but still, you live in this uh, world uh, where the subway either works or doesn't work, right? And where there's, uh, you know, uh, the finances of the city uh, are sound or they're not sound. And mm. uh, still, that creates ramifications that uh, somehow the power goes off on your place or it stays on all the time, you know? I mean there's some kind of ramifications there and you live in that right and then you could say no no we're just all one right <laughs> but i'm not but you still probably even vote right you vote for the better party and then uh and, and are really hooked into uh society just like every last other person is i suppose i don't know what do you think do, do, i think a lot of people at first they back off and think well uh we're all one. There's nothing really to do here. And then they just feel like that there's, uh, I mean, uh, doing falls down from heaven or something like that, or I don't know what. <laughs> doing falling down from heaven. Right. They don't want to do <laughs> anything, right? I like this, I like this picture. But <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I would say all this, um, this would describe, I would call maybe... I don't know, maybe I would call it life, which of course happens. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that, that, or I couldn't say that I'm going to vote or I'm doing all that stuff. Yeah. Because. Because I would say there is no separate thing which runs life or which does life or which goes to elections or 
which does um, do their life. Yeah, I think this is just what happens. So, yeah. You know, people say that uh, uh, somehow they speak about the belief in the separate entity. A lot of uh, speakers speak about the belief in a separate entity and separateness. And uh, yeah. I, I just question the value of that, you know, because I mean, what, and when you say, when you explain to somebody that there's a belief in the separation and they're, they're trying to, and they say, well, I really want to not not be stuck in that anymore you know i i like what you're saying and i kind of there's some feeling to it that actually feels real and vital and uh but all they're left with is a belief in unity you know it's a belief in non-separation and it's totally totally uh like stillborn it's stillborn it's like a dead dead uh, dead horse it doesn't do anything does it the belief in unity it's well, this conversation, this talking about this is a totally meaningless and pointless. That's absolutely true. But it's not about, um, but on the other hand, it's not about the belief of, the belief of oneness or to change a belief from, oh, I'm separate to a belief, oh, I'm not separate. This is, that's not what it's about. Totally not. It's a, it's a suggestion, but also for no one that, that this whole, this whole perception of being someone can collapse totally, can just disappear or vanish. But, um, but as there is nothing separate, there is no one who can do this or can't do this or, yeah, yeah. It's just a suggestion of, this happening, without even a preparation to say this should happen or this is better than feeling separate or something like this. Yeah. Well, I totally know that, uh, you know, that, that the attempt is not to say change a belief in uh, separation into a belief in oneness. I'm just saying, okay, we're talking to a certain people. They have, a, you know, not only a belief, but it just, it, it, it permeates every cell. It just seems like the boundaries are, are, are reality. And uh, so then speaking to those people, they're receiving this thing. They're even, re let's just say they're ready. There's something and they resonate with it. Uh, everything is right. But still, there's no handles on it where it goes anywhere, you know. It just goes into another belief, right, because that's what's happening, right? And so then maybe that shouldn't be stressed too much. You can say it once or twice. And I don't know, you know, I'm just saying now. But, I mean, you could say it, you could say it, but just to say it over and over and over again, like that's the main message, uh, it doesn't s seem very effective uh, on the receiving end. Uh, you know, maybe it's delivered from a, from a, a wholeness and from a open-heartedness, but uh, I don't know. I just happen to notice it. <laughs> I don't know how effective it is. Yeah, well, of course, uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't even know for what it should be effective. There you go, right. Why, well, yeah, there's nothing to go to. I don't know. Well, I don't want to lead any anybody to some special point or something. I think it's not going. There is nothing going anywhere anyway. So you know, even effective. You know, okay, let's just really. I'll put some basic terms on there. You probably say there's none of those either. You know, uh, life affirmative or life uh, negating. <clears throat> Uh, you know, some things happen and, uh, and uh, life is affirmed. You say, well, maybe it's time to be depressed. Who knows? Depression is needed sometimes. And, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you can't really make those judgments, but I don't know. See, what comes to me is like, okay, there's no doing and there's no reason to do anything. 
in, in exact same words, you know, exact same breath. There's no yeah. reason not to do anything. Uh, there is no That's such thing it. as no anymore. There's no no's. And in the absence of no's, uh, there is either, I can, yeah, I can do that or I can't, you know. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. a feeling like I can do it because I used to or I'm pretty good at that. Or a feeling that, oh, I don't want to get into some new stuff uh, so that it'll uh, interfere in my time schedules or something like that. That's probably the only reason to say no. And uh, so then there is absolutely no no in me. In me, the no is melting away in such a great way that I'm be glad to go out and stand on the street, you know, <laughs> and just talk to people because they're out there, you know, and they're actually willing to talk. You know, in a demonstration, you could probably just talk to people and, and uh, tell them uh, something, some tenets about freedom or, or what you think is freedom or uh, you know, sharing arises, right? But I mean, uh, it's just a bunch of sounds, you could say, okay? <laughs> and we're all ascribing meaning to it. And uh, we could even say that there's uh, open-heartedness and love in the air, and there's vibrations, and there's a, you know, there's something like, you know, we couldn't say there was a field, a force field, or a love field or something, but we could say that that would be a way to explain it, a resonance field or... <clears throat> <laughs> yeah yeah tell me how you share you know i've been uh, talking too much i think you mean how the setup of the meetings is well or? just uh you know just tell me your experiences like uh you know what people what they connect with and uh you know uh, uh whatever you want to say you know how you how it arises with between you and uh, and who you speak with yeah well it's well i think what has to be said is that these meetings are very unpersonal it's this message comes out of total unpersonality and so one couldn't re one can't really say that there's a meeting between two people mostly one could say there is this um this there comes question it's a question and answer game i would say or game i don't know but there happens question and answers and Yeah, for a lot of pe for a lot of people, it's very energetic somehow. It's a very energetic meeting. Yeah. What to say about it? It's very different how people, how apparent people react to it. You mean one from another? You mean one from another in the same meeting, or do you mean your meetings with other meetings are different? No, within one meeting. Yeah, because there seem to be, for some it's very relaxing, for some it's really uh, the opposite, it's, it makes fear or, yeah, yeah, there's the whole bunch of reactions, yeah, happening. So for this yeah, for some people who are since a long time in a spiritual journey or looking for peace or whatever, it's very it's about a very existential thing. So it's very energetic. Yeah. So existential and it's full of substance. Somehow, no matter what I'm thinking, it's there. If I can uh, relax my attention and allow, and allow it to. To appear, I mean, it's there already. It's just uh, I somehow let my attention fall to it. Yeah, yeah. At least in the in the meetings, there seems to be um, a flavor of just this, a flavor of being no one, and this is almost sensible. I like the word you use. You use the word resonance. There's a, there can be a resonance in the room of being no one or of just being. 
um, this what this is what seems to happen in the meetings. But this resonance is totally impersonal; has nothing to do with with the persons sitting there. And also, this is sensible to some to some extent. Well, one is can't be sensed or something. But um, yeah, as I said, there's a the flavor of this in the meeting. Yeah. And um, do you call attention it, to that, or do you just uh, let people uh, receive it if they do and not receive it if they don't? Do you just ask people to notice that there, there is a resonance going on here, and that there's energetic? No, no, sometimes, sometimes it is suggested in the beginning that this is what apparently actually is happening, but there is no, no, there is no. I don't say to people do this or feel this now or something because there is no one. There is no one who can do this with with his or her attention. It's just the hint, the pointing out that, hey, this is it. This is what you're looking for. This is it. Uh, and it's it's cool what happens out of this. It's so simple and direct to say, well, yeah, this is it. Don't look anywhere else or to something else or in your story. So what, wherever and whatever, just to say, this is it. Out of this statement, at least if it is said, um, if it's not said as a concept, if it's said directly, a lot seems to arise out of this without making a religion about these meetings or something. This is the meetings are not uh, not special or meaningful. It's not about this, but this seems to happen in the meetings. What do you mean a lot seems to arise out of this? No, like I mean, okay, the energetic part arises. Yeah, now, yeah. A lot of times, what we say is like. Uh, <clears throat> What arises is that uh, old concepts kind of erode. There's an erosion of, uh, of old th thought structures. And I don't know if that's arising or if that's subsiding. <laughs> it's old thought structures subside. But, or. Yeah, some, yeah, uh, yes, that's what I meant. Or a doubt yeah. is planted, maybe. Uh, somehow, like a doubt that I'm so sure of myself and that uh, really realizing that, uh, hey, I don't know too much and, you know, it's not all that bad. <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> 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 yeah, something like this. In the in the worst case, in the worst case, one could say this whole this whole perception of being someone, just from from this, I am someone can dissolve into nothingness. This is um, that's radical. From, that's radical. Yeah, yeah, that's what's about. That's what's about in the meetings. Has that happened to some people, where it just actually went poof? Just uh, really opened up uh, uh, in a lasting way, or is that uh, is that just kind of like a pulsing feeling? Um, I don't know, because no one told me afterwards till now. So I don't know if this uh, this already happened in those meetings. That this um, this perception of being someone. Um, vanished in a way that it never, that it didn't come back again. Well, I don't even mean that, you know, permanent forever, ever, ever. I just mean like uh, uh, repercussions that actually, well, a, a discount, it's a discontinuity and sometimes a discontinuity needs to be navigated and so it it's apparently needs to be navigated, right? Because like, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know much about this. Maybe I don't get it really, but I know. I don't know what to say to this. I don't know if there needs to be. Yes, somehow, of course, this this person wants to be something to wants to have something to hold on or to know something about what seems to happen to itself. I don't know, something like that. 
of course. Okay, without getting into a whole story about it, and I'm not really too curious about that, but I mean, like, something at one time happened to you, right, where things opened up in a bigger way than they were yesterday. And then did you have to navigate that in some way or somehow uh, get used to the new pedals and the new steering wheel or what? how did that work, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> well, I would say, well, I would say that actually I, I needed the navigation as long as there was something still there calling itself me. Of course, there were a lot of shaking and troubles and um, apparent processes. And as long as this was going on, there was the need for navigation somehow. Yeah, of course. But after this complete, I don't, I, I don't really have a word for it. I don't know, breakdown or vanishing or since apparent separation doesn't happen anymore. I don't know, it's just words. Um, navigation isn't needed, actually. Yeah. But uh, sometimes if you read a line from which is written with clarity or said with clarity, it's also great to read it and to, oh, yeah, wow, to can refer to it in, hey, that's cool, yeah, that's that's a cool sentence. I could refer to this totally. Yeah, that's also good somehow. But not needed. Not needed. There's no navigation needed. Yeah. Because there's no one there anymore who would need it. No. No. Does life change? Or is it pretty much the same? I mean, if you were working before, are you working now? Or... Uh... That's it. It's pretty much the same. Actually, I started to work again. <laughs> I didn't work for a... I lived from social welfare for about one year or one and a half years, and then all of a sudden I started working again. And this this apparent address it doesn't change or hardly changed at all, unfortunately. In other words, you're not a better worker? <laughs> <laughs> Are you get along with your coworkers better, or uh, uh, you know, you know, that's apparent, right? Of course, <laughs> but anyhow, that's apparent. Yeah, somehow there's no one in the way anymore, but it's. I think it's not better in a noticeable way. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, not not better, not worse. No, just as it. Yeah, this guy is actually uh, pretty much the same as he always was. If some, you know, if, if if that guy is out of the way, you know, you said some, you know, something's out of the way. Well, uh, it's also out of the way of your own creativity too, right? And so then, uh, so many things can just uh, sprout from that, can't they? Yeah, yeah, seems to, but I wouldn't give it too much, too much. Um, Power, or it's not as great that, but yeah, yeah, there seems to be more creativity. Yeah, somewhere. I don't have to say your creativity. It's just like there is a creativity that that uh, yeah. uh, can see. You know, you so you can see what's working and what isn't, right? You know, for other yeah. for way, you know, okay, you could probably just say everything works because working is not is just arising. It's not real, you know. It's not that it works or not works, but you know, you can see that people object to certain things and that they kind of adhere to other things, whether they're long lasting, uh, you know, fulfillment or not, forget it. But I mean, uh, uh, somehow you could take a few kinks out of, uh, out of relationships and out of, and you know, that's called creativity, I guess. You know, in a way, you say there's no personality and no one there, and your meetings are impersonal. But you are so expressive and so uh, so warm, you know, and such a, a wonderful looking guy that everyone wants to be a friend of, you know. <laughs> so, so whatever's out of the way really kind of just feels like, wow, this guy is really tops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is no one. Yeah. No one's doing this. Yeah. 
So it's just energetic. You just said it. Just it's that energy comes up. You know, this is what comes up, and it's. Hmm. Yeah. So the meetings come. Do your meetings just unfold by themselves, pretty easy, or uh, I don't know, or does uh, do you have an assistant that pushes? <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, no, actually not. There's, it's also strange, but there's a, there's an enormous, an enormous, I don't know, but there's much energy here to do this. The, the organizing stuff and the checking out for dates and doing it, it's pretty much happening here. And, and it's strange because, or not strange, I, I didn't expect something like that because there's no, it hasn't a game, uh, not a game, uh, it hasn't a goal or something I want to get to with this. But, but also there's energy to do it and to work on the website and make new dates and drive around the country. It's, yeah, yeah. I was talking to an indigenous Peruvian, and I came up. They gave me this word, chacarunas. Chacarunas. <laughs> chacarunas. And so I, it turns out I'm a chacarunas, and I guess you are too. But chacarunas is a bridge, and so a bridge is somehow has to be somebody that has a foot in two on two shores or on two banks, right? Or mm. like it's somebody that uh, has experience that spans. Uh, a seemingly gap, a seeming gap, mm. and you know it's we're chakarunas of uh, consciousness. But uh, uh, I do it without even you know just by facilitating and by uh, you know putting people on the air like that and just uh, bringing things up, bringing new ideas out, and then so then you are a chakarunas. Maybe I'm a chakarunas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's happening. Yeah, the energy comes up, and you don't have to necessarily say, "Oh, wow, look at this big fast river." There's a need of a bridge here. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> we don't really have to have a need of a bridge, but bridging is just seem seems like uh, it's our. It's it's uh, I don't know. If you can't even say destiny or whatever. You know, I mean, it's just what's. It's what happens. What's it's happening? Just, it's just what happening without without reason or direction or aim or something which it has to happen for. It's just happening. There's just bridging happening or there's just meeting happening just for no reason, just for it to happen. Yeah. It's cool. It's, it's light. It's light and easy because it's for nothing. One could say on a superficial way, it's just for the fun, just for the fun of it happen, happening. Yeah. It's superficial, but in a way, it's like this. Well, bridging is cool so, uh, because uh, it's okay, it's just happening, but bridging is kind of like an activity that's easy to put uh, explanations on. And, you know, you can say, oh, look, there's a diversity here and it's becoming one, you know, because the bridge can cross it. And uh, then there's a freedom here because we used to be blocked by the uh, by the gap, and we could only go on one side of the gap, and now we can go back and forth. You know, maybe only in a meeting we can go back and forth, but then we can go back to our our life and uh, on our side of the bridge, and uh, see how we like it, or see if it's really maybe the bridge is not even there, and neither is the gap. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, that's a guess. Guess what our message is, right? We're always saying it's right here, right now. So there is no gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no gap. Yeah, but no one to choose. But also no one, no one choosing. Um, if he experiences a gap or not. So. Well, let's say this even to experience a gap or 
it's a depiction of the gap. I would say even to experience oneself as a person happens totally unpersonal. So no one choosing to be in this limited artificial world. Well, it's not artificial in a negative way. It's just a description in this. Yeah, it's also happening to no one. So no one can choose or to somehow come to this. It's not a personal thing at all. Yeah. Nobody can choose to come out of it or nobody choo chooses to go to a meeting or anything, but <laughs> it yeah. just sounds like yeah, it. Yeah, of course. You know, but I mean, that is so well misconstrued, you know. The misconstruing is that I should stop going to meetings or, you know, or that, you know, doing is going to rain from heaven, like I said before, but, you know, I don't know. Somehow, I guess I like to propose that uh, I'm really getting into liking it, you know, proposing that nah, nobody doing anything is the same as everybody doing everything, you know, and uh, what's the difference between uh, uh, not doing and, and, and saying, you know, saying no to doing. I, I think uh, there's no reason to say no because it's not happening, right? And so then you can, you can say, well, you can't say no. No is just arising. I don't know about mm. that, though. It seems like I, I could say no for a lot of years, and then all of a sudden I start relaxing on that. And then things change a whole lot, you know, and then that's just in the artificial world or the artificial reality or the, call it the arbitrary reality, or it's just the, uh, uh, it's the reality of a human agreement. You know, we're agreeing that we live on a certain planet and then we work for a certain guy and we have certain objectives and uh, he pays me if I do this and... Uh, it's just a whole world of agreement that uh, we build this, uh, what do you call it, when it's on the internet, you know, just like a virtual world, you know. We live in the real world and the virtual world, okay, and not even that, right? <laughs> but anyhow, <laughs> kind of the virtual world is all our thoughts, right? And then we say, well, it's pretty real. It's actually a model of the real world. And you say, not really. <laughs> the real world is... <laughs> The real world is just a potential for that artificial world to happen. And uh, I don't know, This, I guess I'm uh, rambling about my favorite subjects. Did you get some? Sorry, the last sentence? No, those are kind of like, uh, I keep saying that a lot, you know. It must be my favorite thing. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And accepting that, you know, because a lot of times when you point out something's artificial or unreal, then people think it's inferior. Because why not have the real, right? If you use those terminologies. So I'm always saying yeah. that it's honorable. All that stuff is honorable. And we're not even doing it. So then how could we be guilty? Uh, that's it. I think also that this term artificial, it has something, it has a negative connotation, which it... it it isn't, it isn't meant like that. Yeah, yeah. Virtual. How about virtual, you know? Or like, you know, flexible or like uh, optional or like uh, arbitrary or like, oh. uh, you know, <laughs> it's the world of change because, I mean, uh, reality doesn't change. And so then uh, how can we possibly know it? There's no contrast. And there's no changes. Mm. Without time, you can't know much. Or can you? Yeah. And that's a question. Can you know much without time? In the timeless realm? No, no. It's complete unknowing. It's total unknowing. No. Without, well, uh, let's go back to this um, artificial, I call it artificial because I don't know so much English words, <laughs> which, uh, um, <clears throat> well, this artificial world is, lives, or the this me lives in cause and effect and lives in time, lives in a story. This is what I would call now the artificial or the virtual reality somehow. Yeah. Um, and this, somehow it lives in knowing or at least in apparent knowing. It lives in knowing the world, in knowing time, in knowing cause and effect, knowing how things work together or doesn't work together. And of course, without this perception, perception of being someone without this perception of this virtual reality it's uh, like living in complete unknowing yeah there nothing is known yeah, yeah. 
So anyhow, the virtual world's built totally on patterns, you know, you know, recognizing or defining patterns, you know, inventing patterns. And then in, uh, in just in, in this moment, there's no patterns. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then you realize that all those patterns that you're recognizing aren't really out there. You're just inventing them. And that's the virtual agreement, you know, you're saying, so you invent them on the moment, or they arise. Nobody invents them, of course. You know. Yeah, yeah. That that I think this is somehow important because, because at least in in some spiritual scenes, the patterns have a bad. There shouldn't be patterns or something, but I think it's just one could say it's um, oneness uh, pattering. Patterns arise. Patterns happen. Yeah, and they can also or do also arise for no one. But at this point, it's hard to call them patterns. Yeah. Also, the behavior looks like as if uh, there's a pattern running, uh, you're doing this again, or you're behaving like this because of da 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 da, da because of your father, or I don't know what. Well, all but kinds of just... patterns, you know, but I mean, okay, you know, this is the confusing part, you know, because so many people are kind of somehow, from some direction, they're approaching this message that really, here, where's the pattern? There's no patterns here. You, you know, that's an that's an act of creation of the mind, the patterns. And yet, mm. you know, then they talk about patterns, spiritual patterns. You know, they're talking from a pattern. And uh, they're saying there's no patterns. And so everybody's kind of really totally believing that we're, we live in a sea of patterns because the spiritual teaching is a pattern. Or they're saying, do this repetition of these uh, meditation techniques. Or, you know, they're, they're, they're saying... Somehow they don't put it on the table that, you know, uh, we can talk from some patterns. I don't know, you know, like they're talking about no patterns, and, but they're talking through a pattern, right? That's a confusing. So many people are confused because they, you, you know, it was, I, was, I brought that up uh, this summer. I was reading about Einstein and uh, rel uh, not relativity. I was reading more about, uh, uh, you know, qu uh, quarks and stuff, you know, uh, mm. quantum. And, uh I just saw that uh, they were always trying to uh, explain the quantum theory in by the Newtonian theory. You know, they were confused because they were saying, well, Newtonian doesn't exist, but they were still trying to explain the quantum by the Newtonian, like the spin and when the velocities and all those things that were fixed. Mm -hmm. And we're doing the same thing. We're trying to explain uh, spirituality with no patterns, and we're trying to do it with patterns. And... Uh, uh, I don't know. That's a huge confusion. It really uh, threw those guys uh, in quantum for a loop for ages. Mm. Well, I, I think I got a taste of what you... Um, well, I don't know. Maybe it's just a, just a thing of... I mean, we're talking about something which actually can't be talked about or can't cannot be known or cannot be hold hold on to but of course to some extent we use this we have to use this this language well and if you use it you have to acknowledge it you know you have to acknowledge and, and you could it's somewhat more than just saying hey language is imperfect and we have to use it but uh you know well, somehow it has what to i can what I can say, sorry, again to this uh, confusing thing is that a lot of, there seem to be lots of spiritual teachers somehow, um, or, yeah, which aren't talking very clearly their message because they really, yeah, as you say, they, they mix things up. Yeah, of course. And this is totally confusing. Totally confusing, yeah. You know, that's exactly what happened with quantum because then they decided, hey, we can't describe this. We can't describe this, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, we're so, the only way we can describe is uh, our window of uh, perception is Newtonian. And we're not going to perceive uh, quantum because we're not a little tiny particle. We're, uh, you know, we're a macro. And they gave mm -hmm. it up. Oh. 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 I mean, they still wrote their formulas and stuff, but they didn't try to really visualize it, see? 
I think that's what always was bugging Einstein. He says, God doesn't shoot dice with the world, you know. So then he didn't like the, those things because he was visualizing. Uh, how could it be that things could be in two places at once or all that kind of stuff, you know. And then not to go into it, but you know. So we're doing the same thing as how could there be no tendencies? How could there be no patterns? How could there be no uh, me and all that stuff? And we're trying to judge it from... Uh, you know, the ones of this, us that are trying to judge it. Uh, well, well, actually, it's very well. Actually, it's very easy to to explain this. <laughs> um, <coughs> um, now I think I, I get it. Uh, what you mean? I think it's very easy to to explain this. There is no pattern, and then talking about patterns. It's um, the the perception of the of the me is only it perceives only objects, and from its viewpoints, patterns are something which it knows and which are real. Without this perception of oneself being an object, me, without this perception, the whole perception of a world full of objects falls apart. So, one could say, then there are no patterns, because there are no objects anymore. There is nothing which can be known like a pattern, which an I or a me, which only lives in at least apparently knowing things, it knows what a pattern is. But if this perception falls away, then there is only oneness apparently patterning. But you can't say there is, there is then no pattern because this pattern is perceived as not as an object. Yeah. So <clears throat> outside of this artificial reality of the me, there are no patterns because there are no things. There is no world. There is no whatever. There is nothing. Nothing or everything because there are no objects there are no objects perceived or objects which are only real yeah and i think this is yeah this is very very confusing yeah because <clears throat> the this me only if one tells about patterns da, 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 then it then it thinks immediately of something it knows a pattern it's something a person learns in childhood and he behaves all the rest of his life like this this is a pattern so something like this yeah but without this perception of being someone there is only one is pattering something like this one is appearing as something as a pattern but there is no of course there is no pattern because there is oneness yeah. Maybe that's what the that th this gap one could say this gap between this reality of the me, which one could call artificial, and that what is this gap can't be bridged in a way. Yeah, say more about that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think <clears throat> this artificial, this me, or this perception of being someone only lives in a perception of separation. It's as if it is its own fun its only function is to to experience oneself as me living in an artificial world. And either this perception, this energy of being someone is there, apparently, or it isn't. But there is no... This which only exists of the perception of being separate can't have the perception of being one. 
because it only exists in the perception of being separate and it only exists in living in the artificial world so everything which is outside outside i don't have better word everything which is outside of this artificial reality it's it's just not can't be imagined can be grabbed can be hold on to can't be can't, accessed can't be included can be included yeah yeah so this <clears throat> so this perception of there being a pattern actually being oneness only appearing as a pattern can be experienced by me or by i by this energy which thinks that it is separate that it is something real so this um this confusion about the um about aha there are patterns but they say there are no patterns it won't be solved by this which feels separate it's impossible that this me will get it will get will get this it will always be confused about this yeah. <laughs> uh. That's good. I guess that'll be a real good marker because we'll know when that confusion drops. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if no one cares anymore, then uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I like the part about, you know, when you started to speak about energetics. And uh, energetics, for me, I took it to be. Uh, like in the meeting, some something arises, which is a feeling. It, and lots of times it was peace, and a lot of times it was... Uh, but some energy shifted. Uh, maybe times it was... Uh, uh, maybe it was just energy and feeling, and, uh, you know, and maybe it was... You know, maybe uh, it's animation, too, because people are saying, wow, this just fell away, wow, you know, and then I could know, oh, you know, then when this went away, I was, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> energy just pops up, you know, somehow there's this change in, a, I don't know, I always call it a belief structure, something uh, changed, shifted somewhere, and then energy was allowed to come through, and mm. then, uh and uh, I notice a lot of energy follows beliefs in the sense that uh, if I believe that some project is useless, that I never can fight these guys. You know, I might have been doing a certain job for all my whole life that can really apply in myself. And then I realize, oh, this is all the mafia. And there's no way I'm going to break <laughs> through the top of this, you know. And then all of a sudden your energy for that just goes <laughs> plummets, right? Okay, mm -hmm. then yeah. uh, um, I think I've seen so many, you know, I look overlook people because that's kind of my, my job in a way doing Never Not Here. And I see, you know, how people react and what's going on. So then I observe these things that mostly most people don't observe because they're just kind of looking inside and trying to be sincere about uh, seeing themselves. And, and it's not really an entertainment show or somewhere to look outside or something like that, you know. But I do it. <laughs> and um, I see so many times that people, when they realize that uh, nobody's doing anything, then a lot of energy just goes away from any kind of projects. There's no energy there for it. But yet, mm -hmm. in your case, there is energy uh, to do your website and to make your meetings and to adjust and all that kind of stuff. So then, uh, what, what, is there anything to say about the phenomena of energy arising? I mean, like I'm making a cause out of it, right? I'm just saying that... Uh, uh, it comes after uh, beliefs can dampen energy, I'm saying. And then somehow when beliefs crash down, they, energy is already here. Yeah, I think if the... <clears throat> well, well, actually, I can't say much about it because this is just what, what seems to happen. I can't even, <clears throat> you know, yeah, that, that's how it is, let's say, right now, Well, um, <clears throat> yeah, but I wouldn't have there anything, oh, normally happens this, or that people don't do things anymore, or, 
all of a sudden people I, I don't know maybe I didn't really get no but I mean it's not so hard to acknowledge that people uh, sometimes for a couple of years don't do so much right and then uh, uh, you know to ascribe a cause to it I don't know you know but anyhow and then other people will ascribe something else and say, oh, that's necessary. This is like the germination period or something like that, you know. Uh, well, you know? well, in this, well, in this story, there, there, there was a time where, where I or where this apparent person, Andreas, didn't do much. Yeah, there was also, yeah. But it's no, it has no meaning or isn't, doesn't mean anything for this or yeah. to this. And well you didn't do much because energy didn't come up to do it right I mean there was yeah. no energy yeah. or interest in it you can just say there's no interest and yeah. that's energy yeah. too right yeah 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 and so then I don't know or oh, there was well yeah yeah I did for what interest was there and when there was no interest I didn't do it yeah of course but even now, uh, now to say, <coughs> but it's also strange because now to say I do this because I'm interested in it is also too much. It's really happening without reason. There's not even, well, yeah, on some way it looks like as if I'm interested in it and interested in it and really enjoying doing it and there's a lot of energy and yeah one could say this and maybe this is how it appears yeah but i mean you can look at it the other way and just say there's a lot of things you're not doing and that maybe you used to do even and you're not interested in it and that's pretty mm -hmm. clear yeah yeah but i think this happens all the time yeah. This happens also to people. Absolutely. <laughs> this happens also to <laughs> apparent people that they do something for a certain amount of time and then they change their interest totally. Yeah, this so is... whatever's animating those people is still animating the no people, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yes. Because there are no people. There are actually only no people. There is no one, so, yeah. So that's always happening with everybody, you know, and they're just thinking, I'm a people and then I'm uh, following my interest. And it That's appears true. that way, and then there's a no people there, and he's following his interest, and he, it appears that way for exactly. him too, you know. And I, I yeah. mean, that's just part yeah, of being exactly. uh, being here, I guess. Yeah. Following interests is what happens then, but no one believes that he's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, or otherwise, just say uh, you know, not following interest. Interest arises with with activity. You know, they arise together. It's just a kind of like, yeah. a, it's a phenomenon. Uh, it's kind of like when I was saying in the very beginning, we like to divide a lot of things. Mm. And we yeah. divide, uh, you know, when I said uh, the body, mind, spirit, and then we divide the community and the personal and, and all these things. Well, we divide uh, activity and interest and say they're two separate things. But And then we're trying to say, well, one doesn't follow the other because there's no pattern and there's no uh, cause and effect. And so then just say, okay, they are, they appear together, you know, they're just how it works, you know, they, they're one thing, actually. Mm, yeah, but, but if you talk like this, then it's clear that just everything appears together. Not together because there are no things which appear together, but there is only this. Yeah, in other words, the boundary between these two fingers is uh, just like uh, imposed by the uh, artificial reality, right? I'm saying there's a boundary here, but really it's all hooked. <laughs> I mean, not even hooked, it's just one hand. That's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a lot of fun out of... Uh, this conversation. I hope everybody that's listening is uh, getting some fun out of it. <laughs> and I hope I didn't put you on the spot too much. I, I really appreciate your presence and I uh, appreciate being with you, Andreas. Yeah. Me too. I like it totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many thanks. Many thanks. Hope we'll see a lot of you and I hope that you, uh, you know, you become a big public figure <laughs> without any interest <laughs> yeah well 
you see. Berlin is the leading place. We said it, you know. You're going to be the leader, right? <laughs> oh. oh, no, please. <laughs> uh, there is no one. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Andreas. Andreas Muller. Thank you, Richard. Thanks. And of course, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Check us out. Check out our website. Uh, check out your yeses and check out your noes and see if either one of them are necessary. And uh, have a wonderful life in a very exciting time. Thank you. <laughs>